today, Joe Stollard is a retired car salesman who's taking it easy and thrilled to spend time with his wife and six kids. But just two years ago, Joe's doctor told him he shouldn't even be alive. Watch this. Joe Stollard was happy to help a neighbor unload some moving boxes. Then suddenly, he had a hard time catching his breath. Everybody was asking me, are you okay, are you okay? And I just told him, yeah, I'm just out of breath and I'm out of shape. By the time Joe made it home, his chest felt like it was squeezed in a vice. His wife had no idea what was going on. I told her, I said, look, I need to have a second, you know, can you leave me alone for just a second? At that point, I was real concerned and I wanted him to sit down in the other room so I could just be there with him and keep an eye on him. My strength was leaving me. My arms and my legs were both trembling and I was slumped forward on the back of a chair. And I never felt so helpless or ever had such a feeling of despair as came over me right then. My knees started to buckle and I realized that I was dying. Joe's son called 911. Paramedics were quick to respond. He said, I'm not really sure what's going on, but it looks like you're having a heart attack involving the front of your heart, the anterior part. And he said, I'm not gonna mince words. That's the worst kind. And we need to go to the closest hospital now. At the hospital, the doctor told Joe that one of his coronary arteries was blocked 100%. Well, Joe survived the massive heart attack, but that's only part of what happened to him, and he's here to tell us why. Joe, thanks for being with us. Pat, good to thanks. See you. It's good to be here. You felt this thing coming on you. Can you describe what happened? It was a seizure in your chest or your arms? Where did it hurt? Well, Pat, it began first with just, it felt like I'd pulled a muscle in my arms uh -huh. from helping the neighbors move. And I was really short of breath at the time, and it just continued to worsen. And then I began to notice a crushing sensation. It, it felt like an elephant was sitting on my chest. Yeah. And it just continued to get worse and get worse. And it felt like a muscle cramp is the best description mm -hmm. I can give it. But it was deep in my chest, very deep in my chest. And I realized then that I was in trouble. Mm -hmm. And uh, up until that point, I'd been trying, really trying to deny what was going on. And that was when I told my wife, I said, you know, something's going on, maybe I better go to the hospital. Well, you began to hear voices, though. What, what did you hear? Well, at that time, there was, with all this that was going on, there was something that was just nagging at me, just eating at me. Mm -hmm. And the room was full of people, and I asked her to give me just a second to clear the room out. That I needed a second alone. And as she left the room, I began to hear a voice and at this time it was an impression really mm -hmm. and it told me bind the spirits mm. and my response to that was what <laughs> <laughs> you weren't used to binding spirits no I wasn't used to binding spirits yeah. and it continued bind mm -hmm. the spirits and I thought well I'm having a heart attack what does this have how can any of this have anything to do with something spiritual mm -hmm. And it became real insistent. I said, bind the spirits. So I started, and I said, I bind these spirits in the name, and that's as far as I got. Yeah. I was interrupted. I was interrupted by what I can describe only as the worst, most hideous sounding laughter I've ever heard in my life. Mm -hmm. It shocked me. It stunned me, and I, it made me jerk my head back. And as I stood there, I began to realize what was going on. Mm -hmm. And that was when I really became hopeless and just lost all, all sense of, of any kind of hope. So you thought this thing was overpowering you so strong you couldn't resist it? Is Absolutely. Yeah. There, there was an overwhelming sense of power involved in mm -hmm. this. And as I stood there, my knees began to buckle, and I was getting ready, to, I was going down. I knew that it was over for me at that point. And a thought came into my mind. Mm -hmm. And the thought said, call on Jesus. 
Well, as soon as that thought presented itself, I really began to hear voices. And the voices were like, how stupid are you? You know that won't do any good. Are you crazy? <laughs> so, uh, with literally no strength left, mm -hmm. uh, it, it took all my strength just to open my eyes when I would blink my eyes. I couldn't even speak. All I could do was just mouth the words, and just in a silent whisper, I Jesus. said, My Lord Jesus. That was it? That was it. Wow. And as soon as I did that, mm -hmm. instantly, instantly, there was an arm around my shoulders. Yeah. You grabbing me. Uh, you actually saw, felt it. It was just a, a, a oh, spiritual this, this presence. Was a, this, no, this wasn't a spiritual presence. This was a physical presence. Yeah. Something grabbed me uh -huh. and lifted me because I was, in, at that point, I was almost in a kneeling position. And my mind just went totally clear. There was absolutely no thought, no emotion, nothing. Just a voice, mm -hmm. one single voice. And all it said was, I'm here. Praise God. Did you ever see, by the way, this demonic spirit? Did you just hear the voice? Did you ever see it? No. You didn't see it? No, anything? I didn't see anything. Uh, but as soon as I heard the voice that said, so I'm, I'm here, here. Uh -huh. I had to turn my head and look because uh, I, it was gripping me on my left shoulder. Mm -hmm. And as I turned to the left and I looked, there was a hand on my shoulder, and it was draped in a white robe. My goodness. And as I looked to the left, I had the sensation of another hand being put on my chest. And as it touched my chest, strength just poured through me. The crushing sensation began to leave. And that just that, that experience ended as quickly as it began. You were as close to death as any human being can get. You were right there on the edge, weren't you? I, yeah, I was on the edge. It, it, the impression I had was that if I closed my eyes one more time, they weren't going to open. Mm. But the hand, you literally saw the hand. You saw a sleeve. I saw a sleeve. And gra grabbing you. I'm it here. it I'm was here. a physical grabbing, lifted me up. Yeah. And uh, right after that happened, I stood up. Mm -hmm. My mind was clear. My strength had returned. I walked in the living room and I sat down. And there was just this incredible sense of peace and calm with me. And I knew then everything was going to be okay. But for some reason, though, that wonderful experience, you didn't really get totally healed. The heart attack continued, didn't it? The heart attack continued. It, it was continuing as they, uh, they went ahead, they took me to the hospital, mm -hmm. and there was just a whole series of events that took place that some people would call them coincidence, and personally, I don't believe in coincidence. Mm, yes. Nothing just yeah, happens. Yeah. Um, they took us to the hospital. While I was there, the doctor said, well, we're going to see if we can send you by helicopter mm -hmm. to the other hospital to have your heart cath done mm -hmm. because it's a 20-minute drive to get you there. And after we'd been there a few minutes, the paramedic came in who had brought me to the hospital. I was surprised to see him. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, something told me to stick around. We'll get you to the hospital. And instead of taking 20 minutes, we got there in just under 11 minutes. Okay. Um, as they took me up to have the procedure mm -hmm. done, my wife ran across one of her customers in the building. Mm -hmm. And he told her he was lost <laughs> and wanted to know what she was doing there. Well, she told him real quick, you're not lost. You're here to pray. Come with me and pray. Um, the next morning, the doctor came in to see me, and he said, you know, he said, and, and the fellow who came in to see me had broken English, and he said, you very lucky, uh, you very bad heart attack, you get here very fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, this presence that I had felt the night before was still there with me and continued with me over the next several days. And it was so overwhelming, I couldn't talk about it. I couldn't talk about it to anybody. All I could do was be quiet. And it stayed with you. you. You still, how long ago was this? How many years? This was two years ago two years when this ago? took place. And it's still vivid in your mind. You can, you'll never forget it. Oh, there, there's a clarity there that goes beyond what I would consider my normal ability to remember. It's fantastic. It's, uh, and the, I have to say, a couple of weeks after this happened, I had gone back to work, and, mm -hmm. and I was still pretty much in a wonderment, is the best way to describe wonderment phase. And I was thinking to myself, why? 
why? Mm-hmm. You know, why, why, why did you come to me? And as I'm walking along, the Lord really convicted me. What did he say? The Lord spoke to me, and he said, of course I came. Yeah. He said, after all, I died for you. Whew. So that was, uh, that was uh, Joe, really pierced. That's fabulous. Listen, I thank you for sharing this. This is beautiful. It's inspiring the faith of many. So God bless you. God you're bless you're you. strong, and you're thank here, you. and you're going oh, yeah. to serve the Lord. Thanks.